Hi, this is Michael Waits, and welcome back to the year-end version 2023 wrapped of the Asia InsureTech podcast. Teresa, it's been an unbelievable year. Did you move to New York this year? Is that the same year that you moved to New York? It is. It feels, you know, it feels longer than a year, um, to be honest. It but it, yeah, it is just a year. Not even like end of January. Wow. I remember us having these conversations when you were in Australia. To be fair, I yep. remember us having these conversations when you were in Germany. But wow. Okay. Yep. Anyway, let's go. What <laughs> happened in 2023? What do we need to know? Um, yeah, just like like every year, um, put together like, you know, our top episodes of the year and also having a look at, um, you know, where we have the the largest fan base, like, you know, which are the top nine countries where people are listening to the Asia and Tech podcast. And, you know, like previous years, it yeah. is actually not only in Asia. Yeah, I mean, in my mind, I feel like the largest listener base is in the United States. Like, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you to tell me where it is. But if are you going to make me guess again this year? Um, of course, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I always have so much fun recording these. Um, yeah, it's the one time where I can lead the conversation. So I'm it. not letting you take this away from me. Go for it. <laughs> okay. okay. Do your thing. So let's start. Start. Um, here we have like the Look top nine countries, and you know, to mix it up a little bit this year, I have pictures of each country, and I let you guess which country it is. Okay. We so, so we're number gonna go in nine. reverse order. Reverse order. This is the top nine country where we have listeners for the Asia Insure Tech podcast. Number nine. That's not Cambodia. I'm guessing Thailand. It is Indonesia. Ah, okay. Where where's where's that? Is that Borobudur? That is Bali, actually. Oh, okay. You know, it's clear you are not a, you know, Instagram influencer, like a travel <laughs> blogger. Otherwise, you would not. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Which okay. is probably a good thing. <laughs> probably a good thing. Okay. Show me eight. <laughs> I have no idea. Where is that? That's the UK. Oh, come on. At least show me, like, London Bridge or something representing, like, London. <laughs> that's not fair okay i you know i had to make it a bit tricky for you but i, Wait, I where promise is that it, gets, it gets easier um that is that is a big ban in the uh background and parliament and sure, the, fair enough. Uh, Thames in River. the distance yeah thank you right it is a bit small on the screen i admit that okay so this is easy that's malaysia those are the petronas towers that's malaysia yeah number seven is malaysia correct number six <laughs> okay that's way too easy <laughs> okay your hometown, Australia. Australia, yes. You know, I, I feel like, except for, for the UK, I've kind of at least spent a lot of time in all of these countries. <laughs> Number five. That's Thailand. That's Thailand, correct. Number where is four. that though? Wait, wait where, where is that though? That is uh, Wat Arun. Ah, yeah, yeah. Normally yeah. I see Wat Arun lit up at night, so it's easier to see, but it's clear that's sound. So that is the ever-shrinking bay in Hong Kong. It is, yeah. Victoria Harbor. God, the harbor okay, just number, keeps getting smaller. Number three, or, you know, just what do you think are the top three countries? So I think number three, two, and one is going to be some combination of the United States, Singapore, hmm, and what's the other one? I don't know, because we've already done Thailand. I don't know, but at least in, in, in the top three is the United States and Singapore. But go ahead. Give me number three. Yep. That's good. And you, when you see the number one, you will be like, oh, of course. So number three, yes, it is the U.S. Number three is the U.S. I always thought it was going to yeah. be number one. Okay, go ahead. Number two. <laughs> of course, Singapore. Singapore. And number one, you will be like, of course. How could I not think about this? <laughs> That is the gate of India. India okay. is number, now, India's number one? India is number one, yeah. Um, and I think that has been also last year the number one. Um, so yeah, shout out to to all our fans in India. Um, and we also have a lot of, um, you know, insure tech startups from India on the for show, sure. right? For sure, for sure. Um, and um, in my opinion, like India is one of, still one of the hottest like insure tech markets globally. Um, also, when I speak to, 
you know, VCs here in the US, a lot of them are interested in what is happening in India because it's still, you know, huge growth opportunity. Um, insurance penetration is still low. It's not as low as Indonesia, right. but, um, you know, there is still a lot of potential um, and it's, you know, an easier entry market um, for companies from the US than China, as for example. For sure. And just the tech ecosystem at large in India is just amazing, right? And there's so much yeah. development going on there. And it's a large home market as well, right? So for it's interesting, right? The more you do these recordings and the more entrepreneurs to whom you speak, like if you're building an Israeli insure tech, you're mostly marketing to people in the United States. And if you're building an insure tech in Singapore, well, then you're also marketing outside of Singapore because there's only six or seven million people there. But in India, you have this home domestic market that's huge as well. So there's a lot yep. to learn there. Anyway, please go ahead. Absolutely. Okay, now you want to have a look at our top five episodes of 2023. I'm just amazed at what you've done with this grid for like the top nine <laughs> countries. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, more? you know, something something different. Um, you know, the previous years um I love looked, this. looked slightly different, but uh I thought I'd make a little game out of it. Um and yeah, I hope that was fun. Go ahead. So now should we have a look at our top number five um episode for the Asia and Should Take podcast? So before you do that, is it is it gonna be surprising, you think, or is it gonna be pretty obvious? Like when you bring up the top five episodes, you're gonna go from five to one, yes? Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm going to go from five to one. I have to say, because a lot has happened and also, you know, in 2023, we started the um, uh, InsurTech Amplify podcast, right? right? Our global right. show. Um, and that's also the reason why we have started to publish every other week. So, right, right, right. you know, before 2023, we published like literally an episode every week. Right. But now with the new global show, we are alternating um, for those who were, you know, maybe wondering why there are not as many episodes. Um, we still have an episode every week. But if you don't find it on the Asia InsureTech podcast, I definitely recommend having Highly. a look at InsureTech Amplified. So... You know, for for me, it's like a bit blurred the lines between the two because you know, obviously, um, both amazing shows with with you as the host, um, and you know, looking at it and thinking like, oh yeah, that's the that's the one for Asia. That's right, um, right. yeah. So um, yeah, let's have a look at number five, Jeffrey Koo. Oh wow! And look at the title of this. I love this. This guy, both online and offline, we talked to him. He was so into it. It's so hard to explain. Like, I think a lot of the things that people don't understand about doing the podcast, right, is that they hear what we record, but they don't hear, like, the prep call. They don't hear what doesn't get recorded before we hit the record button, and yeah. they don't hear the conversation afterwards. This dude, like, the reason why I titled this, Why Am I So In Love With Parametric Insurance, is because I think this has changed this guy's life. So not shocking. Anyway, this was a great episode. Yeah, and yeah, always, always happy to have a chat about parametric insurance. For sure. Wow, number five. Okay, what's next? Number four, Tom oh. Gerritsen from AIA. Oh wow, this one was pretty good too. <laughs> this is the iPhone moment of AI. Here's the thing, you know, I do all these recordings during the year, right? And I'll be honest with you, they don't kind of all blend together. Every one of them has its own little impact on me. And I feel lucky in a way, Teresa, because, you know, I was talking to somebody about this today offline. Like you come from an insurance family, right? So like when you were growing up, your mom and dad were talking about insurance around the dinner table. Or Unfortunately, the table. that is true. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is, right? So for you, like you have all this, and I use the term on purpose, like all this embedded knowledge, pun definitely intended, but I'm learning along the way, right? Yeah. And every episode that I do, I learn something and they all have their own like distinct moments. And I can remember every single one of them. And this has it, this also had its own distinct moments anyway. So what's number three? Um, yeah, no, before we go to number three, you know, even though I grew up, I mean, insurance is such a broad field and it is evolving so rapidly, right? So, um, you know, when I had these dinner conversations with my parents around, you know, they're uh, they running the insurance agency, right. there was no iPhone or, you know, AI <laughs> moments. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, uh, you know, parametric insurance, I think was 
didn't didn't really exist i think could it have of, um yeah i don't know but it's such a broad field and you know i i also learn every time and i think i had a conversation with someone the other day and um even when we believe we know everything or yeah. be an expert in a field right it's still important to listen because you know there's always a different angle there's always a new development so even if you can consider yourself an expert, you still should, you know, listen to what other people have to say, have Absolutely. this like meaningful conversation, because there's always going to be something that surprises you or, you know, that maybe changes how you think about something. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. And that's why, you know, love having these conversations and, you know, listening to, to the podcast you're recording with our amazing guests, because there's always something um, that you can learn from it. Yeah. There's like, there's, when I explain to people like why I love doing this, it's because I get to learn from some of the best people in the insurance and insure tech industry. I feel fortunate, like super fortunate. Anyway, really good stuff. Okay, then um, number three, Ahmed Patel from oh, Peachy. Peachy, yeah. He was so, so here, yeah, again, a, you know, a great example um, of a um, you know, new startup coming in and disrupting you know AIA has been a, a long around for a long time but um here's again proof how you know these new companies are inspiring the industry and um, you know making number three so and i look i get have a lot of fun actually doing these titles i think maybe if people don't understand how i do them what i try to do is i try to take something that the guest actually said and i mean actually believe that it was really time to rewrite the proposition for insurance and yeah. that's why I made this the title. If you listen to the entire episode, you'll actually hear him say this. And to be fair, if you listen to the entire episode for every one that we do, yeah. you should hear the guest say the title at some point. And that's the thing that stood out to me during this, during this recording. He's very confident that it's time to rewrite the proposition for insurance. Yeah. No, I yeah. really love that. I, I, I remember um, when we started with the Asia Insure Tech podcast back in, May 2019, right? It's a long oh time that we've been doing that. And like from day one, you were like, okay, we picked the title um, when, you know, one of the, the sentences that the guests are saying during our recording and um, loved absolutely loved it and still loving it. It's such, such a good way to do it. He was good. And our episode number two for this year is Raunak Meta, founder and CEO at Igloo. Yeah. And, you know, we were just talking about how we title this stuff. I spend so much time talking to people in the insurance industry, right? And this is actually one of the key things that a lot of people say. People want to be protected. There is this point, I think, that senior executives make at insurance companies, and that is that they want to be there when people are at their most vulnerable point. And that point is where they want to make sure that people are protected. And... When Ranak Mehta said this to me, I was, it really resonated with me, right? And, and I think about this a lot, and I'll tell you why. When I was working at Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, I didn't spend a ton of time thinking about my own insurance. It was just provided by the company that I was working with, right? But once I stopped working there, I went without insurance for years. And when I finally got it on my, this is true though, when I finally got it on my own, I wanted to be protected. And then I felt protected and I felt a lot better once I actually signed up for it myself than when I didn't yeah. have it. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, absolutely. I, you know, I can absolutely relate to it. And yeah, you know, I had a, a similar journey. I right? always right. worked in a corporate environment and then suddenly, you know, um, you're doing things on your own. Um, so your own company and um, have to figure out that part. Um, right. And it definitely feels better to have the right protection. Um and, um, you know, just gives you peace of mind. It sounds it pretty does. corny, but that's, it's the truth. It really is. Now we're coming up on number one and don't go there yet. Is this going to surprise me or is it just going to be one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I think you might be surprised. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, I was it. surprised, but um, um, yeah, let's see what, what do you think? You ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Jonathan Reiki. Yeah. From Swiss Re. Swiss Re Corporate Solutions. Yeah. So I remember this. So Jonathan, Jonathan was on one of the panels that I did, I think, at InsureTech Connect in Asia 
two years ago. Is that what it is? Yeah, because it was this year and then last year. So the first one after COVID. And he participated on one of the panels. And I remember talking to him in person. And it was a really great, he's super knowledgeable and very, um, what's the word? I don't want to say conservative per se, but he's like really on point. And I felt like this was a, an, an opportunity to get him to really speak in a way that maybe he hadn't had the opportunity to speak before. This was a really great episode. And the fact that it's number one, in a way, makes me super happy because he comes from a really big company, but I think he has mm. thoughts and ideas that are pretty innovative. And, and I thought this, this episode was actually really interesting. And, and look at the title again, working off the same single source of truth. I think in this episode, we spent a lot of time talking about data and data analysis yes. and data usage. And that made this actually really good. And I love the fact that it happened in the middle of the year. So right in the middle, we got episode number one. That was great. Yeah. And, you know, let me, let me tell you why I was surprised because tell me. I think all previous years we had, um, Either I feel like Kamesh Goyal from from Digit is <laughs> the is the number one, or uh, Ahmad Alad uh, Udin from from um, Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Yep. Yeah, and um, so I think Jonathan is is in Singapore, right? So um, I he's think Australian, time, but based in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah, first time we have um, you know someone from from Singapore making the number one, and again, like coming back to that, our largest audience um, is in India. Um, so yeah, that was uh, was good to see. That is, you know, in a way, it's surprising, but in another way, it's not that surprising at all. He yeah. knows his stuff really, really well. We should have him on again, actually. Yeah, absolutely. We should also get Kamesh on again to give him a chance to, you know, win again number one in 2024. <laughs> exactly. To retake his place as the top episode for a year. Yeah. He's smart, like really smart. No, it has been it has been an exciting year. Um, I mean, you know, um, branching out with the uh, InsureTech Amplified, but still yeah. doing the Asia InsureTech podcast. And, you know, you know, I also published my book on the Asian market, which is, you know, also a homage on what we have been doing with the Asia InsureTech podcast and telling these stories of what is happening across Asia. And, um, you know, once again, having the US and the UK in, you know, the top 10 countries when it comes to, you know, yeah. where our audience is really shows how inspiring these stories are that are formed in Asia. And um, yeah, really excited for another year of um, great stories coming out of Asia. So one of the things that I did was I went through a bunch of the episodes that we did for AIP. And I tried to come up with like the top 10 topics that were covered. Using a little bit of artificial intelligence to do that. Ooh. Yeah, kind of high tech. I'm excited. Let me know. <laughs> so in no particular order, right? But here's the stuff that I think that that really mattered to people globally. And weather and climate. So this was something that was really interesting to people. And I'm curious, you can comment on any of these as we go along, right? Collaboration and data and integrating that data and the management of that data into collaborations, I think was also really important. IoT, so the internet of yep. things, how devices are going to, this gets into parametric as well, are going to then define and help define the way insurance gets delivered mm. and the other things that can get covered. Risk management, so how can, and, and again, a lot of this was how can artificial intelligence help through the risk management process? And then AI was like this overriding theme of the entire year where people just talked about artificial intelligence and should we use it? How can we use it? And I think, remember, it, I think it was November 2022 when ChatGPT kind of got released to the world. Mm. And everybody was just thinking, what can we do with this thing? Yeah. But as the year moved on, people realized that like generative AI and other forms of artificial intelligence can then get used in pretty specific ways for insurance, which we can talk about at some point, but that was key. And then in the context of AI, how do we not lose, this is another topic that was really key this year, how can we not use, lose, excuse me, the human connection, right? So is there, like, there's all this worry at the end of 2022 about, you know, what happens to agents if artificial intelligence can do everything? And one of the themes of this year was, nobody wants to do anything without another human, right? That like AI is great, but it empowers humans to do things better for other humans. It doesn't take the place of humans. Yeah. 
and then yeah that, that is that is that is true um and i think you are you're spot on and um when you are looking at insurance and definitely when you're looking at more complex solutions for right sure. for sure you will want to talk to an agent when you make a decision about you know your health insurance or yep you know, um, retirement planning, et cetera. I think, you know, and you're just getting like a device protection, for example, um, embedded insurance or like, you know, digital channels um, sure. will we'll do for that. But um, as soon as it gets more complex, um, humans will want to talk to humans. And I don't think that will go away. It's never going to go away. So there were three more things. And again, in no particular order. Well, I want to end on one though, that I think is really important. So the third Last one is changes in the workforce. And we saw this when I was in yeah. the trading business at Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. As technology becomes a bigger and bigger part of the business, what type of people do you have to hire? And what type of people actually want to work in the business? You remember this. When we started back in 2019 doing the AIP, there was all this talk. Like every guest we had said, why do you want to do this? Like insurance is not sexy to talk about. I feel like it's gotten kind of sexy in the four years that we've been doing this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like very. And I feel like people are super interested in it. And even people that weren't involved in the insurance industry are now thinking there's some really interesting stuff going on there. So the, there are two more partnerships. And I think this is the idea that like no one succeeds alone. And if in the old days, like bank assurance, so distributing insurance through banks because they already had the yeah. clients was important. Now it's e-commerce companies, other companies that can distribute insurance, I think has become really important or really popular. And actually, I, I the, love this. Also, you know, you as you know, this is one of the overarching lessons learned from um, sure. my book. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's like partnerships have, you know, a new. They were always important for insurance, but right. now it feels like it's on steroid with all the new opportunities to embed and is, connect though. and create ecosystems. Yeah. So, but so it's not just the creation of ecosystems. You make a really good point. It's the fact that insurance companies look outside themselves and say, there's an ecosystem there in which we're not participating. Yep. But if we do, particularly in Asia, right? So this is particularly relevant, I think, for the Asia InsurTech podcast, where still insurance penetration remains lower than it does outside of Asia, that those ecosystems that are getting built organically are now becoming great distribution mechanisms for big insurance companies. And that, that, that partnership level, I think, is really cool. And I don't think this will surprise you, again, as a child of insurance. And, and I mean that in the most respectful way. <laughs> but a lot of the conversations we talked about is for insurance as a social good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that that's actually really important. In other words, in an, in an environment that in a region where penetration is low, right, Remember, I think it was Raunak Mehta who said, people want to be covered. Yep. They want to have coverage. And look, I do another show called the India Game Changer. And on India Game Changer, one of the guys runs a company around helping people. And it wasn't insurance related, but he did say it's a, it's a medical services company. I can't remember exactly. And one of the things he said to me was that every Indian family is one accident away from poverty. Right. And I think that's where insurance really becomes key. And I think that's as a social good, I think that's where it becomes really important. Anyway, those were the top ten, top 10 topics that were covered. And also, you know, it's it's what often prevents families to build generational wells. Right? Exactly. Because they they have to start from zero again and again, again. when, you know, adversity strikes. And um, yeah, if they are not protected, that has an impact not only on them, but also in the on the next generation. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, so I thought that was kind of cool. So we have the top nine countries, not cities, yeah, but top nine countries, top yep. five episodes, and then top 10 topics. I thought all of this was actually kind of cool. No, absolutely. And um, yeah, I can't, can't wait for 2024. And you know what? I think we should also bring back the AIP News Roundup. I agree. Because that had always been so much fun, um, you know, in, in, in 2022, we stopped doing it, adding the the other show, um, adding their InsurTech Amplified, which is a great format. Yep. Um, also to understand, you know, what are 
the latest trends in, in, in insurance for a specific months. But um, I think we should have a revival of the AIP news roundup. I agree. And look, I think it gives us an opportunity to talk about insurance and insure techs in a way that we don't get to talk about necessarily during the what I'll call regular episodes. And yes. we can bring up we can bring up topics that don't necessarily come up, but aren't just ancillary, but are supplementary to what's happening in the insurance and insure tech space. And to be fair, the other thing we we haven't spoken about was how the insure tech climate, I mean, how the investment climate changed for insure techs this year, right? Because yeah. That So we're, we have a, an episode coming up with BCG for their report on how that climate has changed. That is for Amplified. But again, those two shows are related, right? So that's coming out soon. And that is actually super interesting because they did a ton of work on this. And I mean, maybe you want to comment on this as well, but like that investment climate changed a lot. And the way it impacted early stage, mid stage and late stage investments was really kind of cool. And the insights that the, the team from BCG had was actually kind of cool. And that's going to come out soon as well. Yeah, no, looking forward to the episode. And we should definitely, um, you know, have an eye on how this develops for 2024 in Asia. What do you think is going to happen? Like, if I, if, I, if I asked you to make a prediction, what do you think is going to happen in 2024, particularly as it relates to InsureTech and even from the investment standpoint? <clears throat> well, it's a, that's a good question, right? And I think especially if you're looking at um, like emerging markets in Asia, like, you know, I'm talking India, I'm talking Indonesia, right? Um, you know, also still like Thailand and Malaysia um, and then countries coming up, which we haven't seen too much in sure tech activities, like, you know, Cambodia, Myanmar, um, Bangladesh, Pakistan, right? There are activities there and there's a huge potential. And if you are looking at the, um, you know, global crisis we are facing at the moment you know most mostly in europe um but also the us is 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 struggling a bit with the economy right i do believe there's still a lot of potential in these emerging asian markets and um you know my prediction is that investments will go into these areas rather than you know putting more money into european and um you know north american markets um, but that it will really go into Asia, emerging Asia, Africa, you know, huge opportunities and, um, you know, not as impacted as economies in Europe and um, the United States from current events. Um, so, yeah, I do believe there is a lot of potential still in those market for InsurTech to come up with, you know, new ways to make insurance more accessible. And, um, you know, benefit from this population growth and the, you know, growing middle class. Um, and what I also found is because, you know, we are leapfrogging certain development stages and especially Absolutely. in Asia, we talked about, you know, these digital platforms and these ecosystems. And I think actually a lot of Western countries can learn a lot from the solutions that are built there because they are predominantly designed for a young and tech savvy population. Yeah. And that is something, and we talked about this. I was actually shocked when I moved to the U S how backward in a way it is like the banking Payments. and insurance system right. here right. Um, compared to, to Asia. So yeah, I think the world can learn a lot from, from these markets and these new solutions that are really targeting um, young tech savvy um, consumers. So I'm going to make two provocative predictions. The Federal Reserve Board has an, has basically announced that they're not going to raise rates anymore. And I think that the rising rates in the United States, so the short-term rates, impacted the amount of money that was invested not just in insurance startups and insure tech startups, but in startups in general, right? Because money itself just became more expensive. And I think as we go into 2024, the Fed has said they're probably going to lower rates, even if they lower rates 50 basis points. It's going to just going to change the cost of money and make it cheaper which means I think there's going to be more investment in startups. And I think that, that some of the, a lot of that money is going to go into insurtex. The second thing that I think is going to happen that I don't hear a lot of people talking about is that I think you're going to see private equity companies and family offices invest in capacity. So invest in underwriting, mm. which is a new kind of thing, I believe. But I think we're going to see a lot of that in 2024. Those are my two predictions. 
Yeah, no, interesting. And I, I think I also see a lot of potential there. I just feel a lot of companies did not feel comfortable. Um, like, you know, a lot of non-insurance VCs didn't feel comfortable investing in that part because that's right. what they don't understand. And we have seen this in Asia, right? There was yep. a lot of investment in the past three, four years going into like e-commerce like insure techs, right? Right, 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 um, right, right? B2, B2C, online channels, et cetera, because that was what a lot of the VCs understood with the hype in e-commerce, et cetera. Right. But, you know, capacity underwriting, that is something that can be tough to grasp for people who are not coming from within the industry. Exactly. Anyway, those are my predictions. Okay. So, so let's see. It was an incredible <laughs> conversation. You need to do more. I love the graphics you put up, the nine countries, <laughs> the whatever that was, <laughs> and the five episodes. You're really good at that. You should do that more often. <laughs> Come on. How can I, I, get I always keep that for, you know, the end of the year special. Know. <laughs> You're just saving it. Anyway, yep. that was awesome. And um, I cannot wait to see what's going to happen in 2024. Teresa, thank you so much for doing this, for all the prep, and for all of the stuff we did in 2023. And all of the things coming in 2024, not just for AIP, but for Amplified as well. I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. 